part four chapter two of crime and punishment by fyodor dostoevsky translated by constance garnett recording by expatriate in bangor maine part four chapter two it was nearly eight o'clock the two young men hurried to bakaliev's to arrive before luzhin why who was that asked razumihin as soon as they were in the street it was svidrigailov that landowner in whose house my sister was insulted when she was their governess through his persecuting her with his attentions she was turned out by his wife marfa petrovna this marfa petrovna begged dunya's forgiveness afterwards and she's just died suddenly it was of her we were talking this morning i don't know why i'm afraid of that man he came here at once after his wife's funeral he is very strange and is determined on doing something we must guard dunya from him that's what i wanted to tell you do you hear guard her what can he do to harm avdotya romanovna thank you rodya for speaking to me like that we will we will guard her where does he live i don't know why didn't you ask what a pity i'll find out though did you see him asked raskolnikov after a pause yes i noticed him i noticed him well you did really see him you saw him clearly raskolnikov insisted yes i remember him perfectly i should know him in a thousand i have a good memory for faces they were silent again hm that's all right muttered raskolnikov do you know i fancied i keep thinking that it may have been an hallucination what do you mean i don't understand you well you all say raskolnikov went on twisting his mouth into a smile that i am mad i thought just now that perhaps i really am mad and have only seen a phantom what do you mean why who can tell perhaps i am really mad and perhaps everything that happened all these days may be only imagination ah rodya you have been upset again but what did he say what did he come for raskolnikov did not answer razumihin thought a minute now let me tell you my story he began i came to you you were asleep then we had dinner and then i went to porfiry's zamatov was still with him i tried to begin but it was of no use i couldn't speak in the right way they don't seem to understand and can't understand but are not a bit ashamed i drew porfiry to the window and began talking to him but it was still no use he looked away and i looked away at last i shook my fist in his ugly face and told him as a cousin i'd brain him he merely looked at me i cursed and came away that was all it was very stupid to zamatov i didn't say a word but you see i thought i'd made a mess of it but as i went downstairs a brilliant idea struck me why should we trouble of course if you were in any danger or anything but why need you care you needn't care a hang for them we shall have a laugh at them afterwards and if i were in your place i'd mystify them more than ever how ashamed they'll be afterwards hang them we can thrash them afterwards but let's laugh at them now to be sure answered raskolnikov but what will you say to-morrow he thought to himself strange to say till that moment it had never occurred to him to wonder what razumihin would think when he knew as he thought it raskolnikov looked at him razumihin's account of his visit to porfiry had very little interest for him so much had come and gone since then in the corridor they came upon luzhin he had arrived punctually at eight and was looking for the number so that all three went in together without greeting or looking at one another the young men walked in first while pyotr petrovitch for good manners lingered a little in the passage taking off his coat Bulkaria alexandrovna came forward at once to greet him in the doorway dunya was welcoming her brother pyotr petrovitch walked in and quite amiably though with redoubled dignity bowed to the ladies he looked however as though he were a little put out and could not yet recover himself Bulkaria alexandrovna who seemed also a little embarrassed hastened to make them all sit down at the round table where a samovar was boiling dunya and luzhin were facing one another on opposite sides of the table razumihin and raskolnikov were facing Bulkaria alexandrovna razumihin was next to luzhin and raskolnikov was beside his sister a moment's silence followed Pyotr petrovitch deliberately drew out a cambric handkerchief reeking of scent and blew his nose with an air of a benevolent man who felt himself slighted and was firmly resolved to insist on an explanation in the passage the idea had occurred to him to keep on his overcoat and walk away 
and so give the two ladies a sharp and emphatic lesson and make them feel the gravity of the position but he could not bring himself to do this besides he could not endure uncertainty and he wanted an explanation if his request had been so openly disobeyed there was something behind it and in that case it was better to find it out beforehand it rested with him to punish them and there would always be time for that i trust you had a favourable journey he inquired officially of pulcheria alexandrovna oh very pyotr petrovitch i am gratified to hear it and avdotya romanovna is not over fatigued either i am young and strong i don't get tired but it was a great strain for mother answered dunya that's unavoidable our national railways are of terrible length mother russia as they say is a vast country in spite of all my desire to do so i was unable to meet you yesterday but i trust all passed off without inconvenience oh no pyotr petrovitch it was all terribly disheartening pulcheria alexandrovna hastened to declare with peculiar intonation and if dmitri prokovitch had not been sent us i really believe by god himself we should have been utterly lost here he is dmitri prokovitch razumihin she added introducing him to luzhin i had the pleasure yesterday muttered pyotr petrovitch with a hostile glance sidelong at razumihin then he scowled and was silent pyotr petrovitch belonged to that class of persons on the surface very polite in society who make a great point of punctiliousness but who directly they are crossed in anything are completely disconcerted and become more like sacks of flour than elegant and lively men of society again all was silent raskolnikov was obstinately mute avdotya romanovna was unwilling to open the conversation too soon razumihin had nothing to say so pulcheria alexandrovna was anxious again marfa petrovna is dead have you heard she began having recourse to her leading item of conversation to be sure i had heard so i was immediately informed and i have come to make you acquainted with the fact that arkady ivanovitch svidrigailov set off in haste for petersburg immediately after his wife's funeral so at least i have excellent authority for believing to petersburg here dunya asked in alarm and looked at her mother yes indeed and doubtless not without some design having in view the rapidity of his departure and all the circumstances preceding it good heavens won't he leave dunya in peace even here cried pulcheria alexandrovna i imagine that neither you nor avdotya romanovna have any grounds for uneasiness unless of course you are yourselves desirous of getting into communication with him for my part i am on my guard and am now discovering where he is lodging oh pyotr petrovitch you would not believe what a fright you have given me pulcheria alexandrovna went on i have only seen him twice but i thought him terrible terrible i am convinced that he was the cause of marfa petrovna's death it's impossible to be certain about that i have precise information i do not dispute that he may have contributed to accelerate the course of events by the moral influence so to say of the affront but as to the general conduct and moral characteristics of that personage i am in agreement with you i do not know whether he is well off now and precisely what marfa petrovna left him this will be known to me within a very short period but no doubt here in petersburg if he has any pecuniary resources he will relapse at once into his old ways he is the most depraved and abjectly vicious specimen of that class of men i have considerable reason to believe that marfa petrovna who was so unfortunate as to fall in love with him and to pay his debts eight years ago was of service to him also in another way solely by her exertions and sacrifices a criminal charge involving an element of fantastic and homicidal brutality for which he might well have been sentenced to siberia was hushed up that's the sort of man he is if he care to know good heavens cried pulcheria alexandrovna raskolnikov listened attentively are you speaking the truth when you say that you have good evidence of this dunya asked sternly and emphatically i only repeat what i was told in secret by marfa petrovna i must observe that from the legal point of view the case was far from clear there was and i believe still is living here a woman called Reslich, a foreigner who lent small sums of money at interest and did other commissions and with this woman svidrigailov had for a long while close and mysterious relations she had a relation a niece i believe living with her a deaf and dumb girl of fifteen or perhaps not more than fourteen 
Resley hated this girl and grudged her every crust she used to beat her mercilessly one day the girl was found hanging in the garret at the inquest the verdict was suicide after the usual proceedings the matter ended but later on information was given that the child had been cruelly outraged by svidrigailov it is true this was not clearly established the information was given by another german woman of loose character whose word could not be trusted no statement was actually made to the police thanks to marfa petrovna's money and exertions it did not get beyond gossip and yet the story is a very significant one you heard no doubt avdotya romanovna when you were with them the story of the servant philip who died of ill-treatment he received six years ago before the abolition of serfdom i heard on the contrary that this philip hanged himself quite so but what drove him or rather perhaps disposed him to suicide was the systematic persecution and severity of mr svidrigailov i don't know that answered dunya dryly i only heard a queer story that philip was a sort of hypochondriac a sort of domestic philosopher the servants used to say he read himself silly and that he hanged himself partly on account of mr svidrigailov's mockery of him and not his blows when i was there he behaved well to the servants and they were actually fond of him though they certainly did blame him for philip's death i perceive avdotya romanovna that you seem disposed to undertake his defence all of a sudden luzhin observed twisting his lips into an ambiguous smile there's no doubt that he is an astute man and insinuating where ladies are concerned of which marfa petrovna who has died so strangely is a terrible instance my only desire has been to be of service to you and your mother with my advice in view of the renewed efforts which may certainly be anticipated from him for my part it's my firm conviction that he will end in a debtor's prison again marfa petrovna had not the slightest intention of settling anything substantial on him having regard for his children's interests and if she left him anything it would only be the merest sufficiency something insignificant and ephemeral which would not last a year for a man of his habits pyotr petrovitch i beg you said dunya say no more of mr svidrigailov it makes me miserable he has just been to see me said raskolnikov breaking his silence for the first time there were exclamations from all and they all turned to him even pyotr petrovitch was roused an hour and a half ago he came in when i was asleep waked me and introduced himself raskolnikov continued he was fairly cheerful and at ease and quite hopes that we shall become friends he is particularly anxious by the way dunya for an interview with you at which he asked me to assist he has a proposition to make to you and he told me about it he told me too that a week before her death marfa petrovna left you three thousand roubles in her will dunya and that you can receive the money very shortly thank god cried pulcheria alexandrovna crossing herself pray for her soul dunya it's a fact broke from luzhin tell us what more dunya urged raskolnikov then he said that he wasn't rich and all the estate was left to his children who are now with an aunt then that he was staying somewhere not far from me but where i don't know i didn't ask but what what does he want to propose to dunya cried pulcheria alexandrovna in a fright did he tell you yes what was it i'll tell you afterwards raskolnikov ceased speaking and turned his attention to his tea pyotr petrovitch looked at his watch i am compelled to keep a business engagement and so i shall not be in your way he added with an air of some pique and he began getting up don't go pyotr petrovitch said dunya you intended to spend the evening besides you wrote yourself that you wanted to have an explanation with mother precisely so avdotya romanovna pyotr petrovitch answered impressively sitting down again but still holding his hat i certainly desired an explanation with you and your honoured mother upon a very important point indeed but as your brother cannot speak openly in my presence of some proposals of mr svidrigailov i too do not desire and am not able to speak openly in the presence of others of certain matters of the greatest gravity moreover my most weighty and urgent request has been disregarded assuming an aggrieved air luzhin relapsed into a dignified silence your request that my brother should not be present at our meeting was disregarded solely at my insistence said dunya you wrote that you had been insulted by my brother i think that this must be explained at once and you must be reconciled and if rodya really has insulted you then he should and will apologize 
pyotr petrovitch took a stronger line there are insults avdotya romanovna which no good will can make us forget there is a line in everything which it is dangerous to overstep and when it has been overstepped there is no return that wasn't what i was speaking of exactly pyotr petrovitch dunya interrupted with some impatience please understand that our whole future depends now on whether all this is explained and set right as soon as possible i tell you frankly at the start that i cannot look at it in any other light and if you have the least regard for me all this business must be ended to-day however hard that may be i repeat that if my brother is to blame he will ask your forgiveness i am surprised at your putting the question like that said luzhin getting more and more irritated esteeming and so to say adoring you i may at the same time very well indeed be able to dislike some member of your family though i lay claim to the happiness of your hand i cannot accept duties incompatible with ah don't be so ready to take offence pyotr petrovitch dunya interrupted with feeling and be the sensible and generous man i have always considered and wish to consider you to be i have given you a great promise i am your betrothed trust me in this matter and believe me i shall be capable of judging impartially my assuming the part of judge is as much a surprise for my brother as for you when i insisted on his coming to our interview to-day after your letter i told him nothing of what i meant to do understand that if you are not reconciled i must choose between you it must be either you or he that is how the question rests on your side and on his i don't want to be mistaken in my choice and i must not be for your sake i must break off with my brother for my brother's sake i must break off with you i can find out for certain now whether he is a brother to me and i want to know it and of you whether i am dear to you whether you esteem me whether you are the husband for me avdotya romanovna luzhin declared huffily your words are of too much consequence to me i will say more they are offensive in view of the position i have the honour to occupy in relation to you to say nothing of your strange and offensive setting me on a level with an impertinent boy you admit the possibility of breaking your promise to me you say you or he showing thereby of how little consequence i am in your eyes i cannot let this pass considering the relationship and the obligations existing between us what cried dunya flushing i set your interest beside all that has hitherto been most precious in my life what has made up the whole of my life and here you are offended at my making too little account of you raskolnikov smiled sarcastically razumihin fidgeted but pyotr petrovitch did not accept the reproof on the contrary at every word he became more persistent and irritable as though he relished it love for the future partner of your life for your husband ought to outweigh your love for your brother he pronounced sententiously and in any case i cannot be put on the same level although i said so emphatically that i would not speak openly in your brother's presence nevertheless i intend now to ask your honoured mother for a necessary explanation on a point of great importance closely affecting my dignity your son he turned to pulcheria alexandrovna yesterday in the presence of mr radzudkin or i think that's it excuse me i have forgotten your surname he bowed politely to razumihin insulted me by misrepresenting the idea i expressed to you in a private conversation drinking coffee that is that marriage with a poor girl who has had experience of trouble is more advantageous from the conjugal point of view than with one who has lived in luxury since it is more profitable for the moral character your son intentionally exaggerated the significance of my words and made them ridiculous accusing me of malicious intentions and as far as i could see relied upon your correspondence with him i shall consider myself happy pulcheria alexandrovna if it is possible for you to convince me of an opposite conclusion and thereby considerately reassure me kindly let me know in what terms precisely you repeated my words in your letter to rodion romanovitch i don't remember faltered pulcheria alexandrovna i repeated them as i understood them i don't know how rodya repeated them to you perhaps he exaggerated he could not have exaggerated them except at your instigation pyotr petrovitch pulcheria alexandrovna declared with dignity the proof that dunya and i did not take your words in a very bad sense is the fact that we are here good mother said dunya approvingly then this is my fault again said luzhin aggrieved 
well pyotr petrovitch you keep blaming rodion but you yourself have just written what was false about him pulcheria alexandrovna added gaining courage i don't remember writing anything false you wrote raskolnikov said sharply not turning to luzhin that i gave money yesterday not to the widow of the man who was killed as was the fact but to his daughter whom i had never seen till yesterday you wrote this to make dissension between me and my family and for that object added coarse expressions about the conduct of a girl whom you don't know all that is mean slander excuse me sir said luzhin quivering with fury i enlarged upon your qualities and conduct in my letter solely in response to your sister's and mother's inquiries how i found you and what impression you made on me as for what you've alluded to in my letter be so good as to point out one word of falsehood show that is that you didn't throw away your money and that there are not worthless persons in that family however unfortunate to my thinking you with all your virtues are not worth the little finger of that unfortunate girl at whom you throw stones would you go so far then as to let her associate with your mother and sister i have done so already if you care to know i made her sit down to-day with mother and dunya roja cried pulcheria alexandrovna dunya crimsoned razumihin knitted his brows luzhin smiled with lofty sarcasm you may see for yourself avdotya romanovna he said whether it is possible for us to agree i hope now that this question is at an end once and for all i will withdraw that i may not hinder the pleasures of family intimacy and the discussion of secrets he got up from his chair and took his hat but in withdrawing i ventured to request that for the future i may be spared similar meetings and so to say compromises i appeal particularly to you honoured pulcheria alexandrovna on this subject the more as my letter was addressed to you and to no one else pulcheria alexandrovna was a little offended you seem to think we are completely under your authority pyotr petrovitch dunya has told you the reason your desire was disregarded she had the best intentions and indeed you write as though you were laying commands upon me are we to consider every desire of yours as a command let me tell you on the contrary that you ought to show particular delicacy and consideration for us now because we have thrown up everything and have come here relying on you and so we are in any case in a sense in your hands that is not quite true pulcheria alexandrovna especially at the present moment when the news has come of marfa petrovna's legacy which seems indeed very apropos judging from the new tone you take to me he added sarcastically judging from that remark we may certainly presume that you are reckoning on our helplessness dunya observed irritably but now in any case i cannot reckon on it and i particularly desire not to hinder your discussion of the secret proposals of arkady ivanovitch svidrigailov which he has entrusted to your brother and which have i perceive a great and possibly a very agreeable interest for you good heavens cried pulcheria alexandrovna razumihin could not sit still on his chair aren't you ashamed now sister asked raskolnikov i am ashamed rodya said dunya pyotr petrovitch go away she turned to him white with anger pyotr petrovitch had apparently not at all expected such a conclusion he had too much confidence in himself in his power and in the helplessness of his victims he could not believe it even now he turned pale and his lips quivered avdotya romanovna if i go out of this door now after such a dismissal then you may reckon on it i will never come back consider what you are doing my word is not to be shaken what insolence cried dunya springing up from her seat i don't want you to come back again what so that's how it stands cried luzhin utterly unable to the last moment to believe in the rupture and so completely thrown out of his reckoning now so that's how it stands but do you know avdotya romanovna that i might protest what right have you to speak to her like that pulcheria alexandrovna intervened hotly and what can you protest about what rights have you am i to give my dunya to a man like you go away leave us altogether we are to blame for having agreed to a wrong action and i above all but you have bound me pulcheria alexandrovna luzhin stormed in a frenzy by your promise and now you deny it and besides i have been led on account of that into expenses 
this last complaint was so characteristic of pyotr petrovitch that raskolnikov pale with anger and with the effort of restraining it could not help breaking into laughter but pulcheria alexandrovna was furious expenses what expenses are you speaking of our trunk but the conductor brought it for nothing for you mercy on us we have bound you what are you thinking about pyotr petrovitch it was you bound us hand and foot not we enough mother no more please avdotya romanovna implored pyotr petrovitch do be kind and go i am going but one last word he said quite unable to control himself your mamma seems to have entirely forgotten that i made up my mind to take you so to speak after the gossip of the town had spread all over the district in regard to your reputation disregarding public opinion for your sake and reinstating your reputation i certainly might very well reckon on a fitting return and might indeed look for gratitude on your part and my eyes have only now been opened i see myself that i may have acted very very recklessly in disregarding the universal verdict does the fellow want his head smashed cried razumihin jumping up you are a mean and spiteful man cried dunya not a word not a movement cried raskolnikov holding razumihin back then going close up to luzhin kindly leave the room he said quietly and distinctly and not a word more or pyotr petrovitch gazed at him for some seconds with a pale face that worked with anger then he turned went out and rarely has any man carried away in his heart such vindictive hatred as he felt against raskolnikov him and him alone he blamed for everything it is noteworthy that as he went downstairs he still imagined that his case was perhaps not utterly lost and that so far as the ladies were concerned all might very well indeed be set right again end of part four chapter two recording by expatriate in bangor maine